This is lesson 3.1, translating graphs of functions. In this lesson, the focus will be on looking at the related changes in the equation of a function to both the vertical and horizontal translations of its graph. So if you recall back to um, grade 11, what we primarily looked at was quadratic functions. We learned how we could graph them when we have something written like this in standard form. What we're going to be doing in this lesson is we're going to be looking at functions in general, not necessarily just quadratic functions. Okay, but I want to start here with you because I want you to remember this uh, this format, the standard form, or sometimes referred to as vertex form, um, allows us to find where the vertex is very easily. And so I want you to remember what each one of these values a, p, and q do to your graph. Let's start with q. Q right here is going to move your graph, if you recall, up or down. Okay, so if it was uh, plus 2, then it means the vertex would go up 2. If it's negative 2, it's down 2. Simple as that. Uh, the p value right here is going to move your graph. It's going to translate it either right or left. And underneath that, I'm going to write opposite. Now, it isn't really the opposite, but what's happening here is imagine I substitute in a 2 value, a positive 2. That does mean that we're going to move it to the right 2. But what it's going to look like, it's going to look like x minus 2. So when my students see x minus 2, I encourage them to think, well, even though it's like a negative 2 sitting there, you're actually going to move it in the positive direction too. Or if you saw an x plus 2, that actually means it's going to move in the negative direction or left. Okay. So that's what our p and q values do, okay, moving it left, right, or up or down. And then finally, you'll remember that a is going to be your um, stretching or compressing. And maybe I'll write, and it will also um, flip your graph. So what happens here? Well, when the value is, uh, let's say, when we have, we'll do a different color. We're going to stretch when a is greater than 1 or when a is less than negative 1. So stretching means the graph is, if you were to take a look at it, it's like someone pulled it from the top, the graph is going to get narrower. So if this was the shape of my regular quadratic, we would see that uh, if it was stretched, it would get kind of narrower, maybe like that. Okay, we're going to have a compression right here when a is between 1 and negative 1. Often that's written as a fraction, and the graph would be like someone kind of sat on it. Uh, so we call it being compressed. You'll get a graph that looks a little bit kind of wider like so. And then the graph can also be flipped, and that just happens if we have an a value that is, um, is less than 0. Uh, that will be a quadratic that maybe looks something like so. Okay, so what I want you to remember is what these a, p, and q values do, because the interesting thing is, is although we might not call them a, p, and q uh, moving forward, there's definitely going to be um, some similarities you'll be able to take moving forward. So those of you who found this really easy last year, I think we'll find this lesson fairly straightforward as well. Okay, so in general, what can we say? Um, in general, the graph of y is equal to f of x minus h is a horizontal translation of the graph of y equals f of x. So all this is saying is that when you have an h value right here, minus h, that's going to take it in the h direction. Okay, um, That simple. So if you saw x minus 2, it's going to take you 2 in the positive direction. If you saw x plus 2, 2 in the negative direction. So no different than what you've seen before. The vertical translations are exactly the same is a hair bit different in a sense. What they've done is rather than having the q on the right hand side of the equation, could you visualize that if we were to move the q to the other side of the equation right here, it'd be the same as y minus q. And that's how they have it set up right here. So we can think of the q value as also kind of being opposite. So if you were to see y minus, in this, in this example where they call it k, y minus, let's say, 3, that actually means that if you saw a negative 3, the graph is going to go up 3. If you saw y plus 4, for instance, that means the graph is going to go down 4. Okay? And so we'll talk a little bit more about that format um, to come. But let's start with a couple relatively simple examples where we will just go and um, sketch the image of a function after we've translated it a little bit. Okay? So example 1 here says, Sketch the image graph of the function y is equal to g of x after each translation. Write the equation of the image graph in terms of the function g, and then state the domain, uh, I should say, and range of each function. Okay, so a, a translation of four units left. This couldn't be any more simple. 
all you're going to do is take the known values that we have here. So they've given you one, two, three, four, these known values. I, or I like to call them known values because they're very obvious where they are. And let's just move those four units uh, to the left. So this one, I'm going to count one, two, three, and four. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four and one, two, three, four. So the graph is going to just be moved. The shape is not going to change at all. And so you'll see that we have still the exact same graph, just like so. Okay. So not too uh, wild and crazy. The last thing that we have to do right here is we need to figure out what our domain and range is for our two functions. So let's write a little t-chart right here where we'll have our original function, and that was y is equal to g of x, so that was our original function, and then we'll write our new function which is y is equal to g of x, and since we've gone in the left direction or the negative direction, we write x plus 4. Okay, we kind of do the opposite. So those are our two functions, and then I'll set up, uh, let's write d for domain, and then we'll put our range down here. Okay, so let's look at our original function. What values of x did we have for original function? Well, if you take a look, we have values at negative 1, and those go all the way to 6 continuous. And we include those two points because those dots are filled in. So we will say that x is less than or equal to 6, and greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay, how has the domain changed for our new function? Well, we've just moved it 4 more in the negative direction. So we can basically go and uh, subtract 4, if you will, from each one of these numbers. So 6 minus 4 will give me 2, and we can confirm that, that that's at a 2 value right here. So we have x is less than or equal to 2, and greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay. Now, the range. Has the range changed at all right here? Well, let's look at our original function. So our gray function right here. We have y values, the highest value being at 5, and the lowest value being at 2. And of course, because we were simply just moving this to the left, the range has not changed. So I'm just going to write that this one right here is going to be the same as what we had right here. Okay, So very straightforward. Um, this is just kind of getting us started in this lesson. Uh, my suggestion would be for you is to uh, try doing B here on your own, just like we did before. Okay. So B is a translation of one unit up. So again, very quickly, I'll take each point. I will move it one unit up like so, connect the dots, fa la la, and you have a graph that looks like this. Okay. Um, finally here what we'll do is we'll set up our domain and range, so we will deal with our first function. The first function we have is y is equal to g of x, and our other function is going to be y minus 1 is equal to g of x. And I know that some of you might have thought that I was going to write y is equal to g of x plus 1. And those are actually the same thing, right? Because last year when we had quadratics, our, um, our q value, we would write out here. Um, in this unit, what we're going to do is we're primarily, the format that we use is we write the, uh, the vertical translation out in front. So this minus 1 actually means the graph has gone up 1. Okay, uh, Domain and range. Well, the domain should not have changed for either of these, um, but let's just go and confirm that. So my domain, what values of x do I have? It looks like my biggest value right here is at 6, and it goes to negative 1. So we'll say that x is less than or equal to 6 and greater than or equal to negative 1. And we can see, of course, that because we just moved the graph up, that's going to be the same. And let's look at our range. Our range should have changed, obviously. Um, the highest value that we had before looked like it was at 5. So we'll say that y is less than or equal to 5. The lowest value was at 2. And we've moved 1 up. So we will simply just add 1 to each of these. OK? So very, very, very straightforward. Um, that is the first part of uh, dealing with these uh, translations. OK? So uh, the last thing I want to do right here is um, I want you to be comfortable with seeing a translation or being given a translation to make and then writing what the appropriate uh, function would look like. And we, we tackled this a little bit when I was writing the, uh, the domain and range uh, functions kind of like right here. Um, but the h right here, remember what that's going to do? That's going to move your graph left or right. And this k value is going to move you up or down. And then in my head, I like to think of it as being kind of opposite. All right, so let's go and try our example number two. Example two states, here is the graph of y is equal to j of x. Sketch the image graph after a translation of four units to the left and then five units down. Then they want you to write the equation of the image graph in terms of the function j. And then we'll state the domain and range as we've done for our previous uh, two examples. 
Okay, so first let's uh, let's deal with the graph here. So they want us to move it four units to the left and then five units down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the points that are kind of easiest to move, uh, which looks like these two right here, and we'll deal with those first. So four units to the left would be one, two, three, four, and then five units down, one, two, three, four, five. And then the same thing we will have is one, two, three, four left, and then one, two, three, four, five. And that looks about right because we had one, two, three in between them. We still have three in between them. Uh, this point up here, it's a little bit tougher uh, to navigate. So this one's right in the middle. It looks like it's at about 0.5. So that means if we move four to the left, we're going to be one, two, three, four, and then down five, one, two, three, four, five. That's right on the x-intercept. And so from there to those points, right, you have a nice curve down approximately like so. And then from there, uh, the values increase significantly. And so uh, what we're going to do is the best we can kind of do for this is we're going to do a sketch. So the sketch will kind of go about something like so and about something like so there, okay, because we don't have a lot of exact information. Okay, so we use the information that we can to the best of our ability. Next thing we want to do is let's write the equation of this uh, graph, okay? So the original graph we had was, of course, y is equal to j of x. And because we've moved that unit five units downward, if you remember what we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite values. So in this case, we're going to go y plus 5, okay, is equal to j of. And now we've got to deal with uh, how far we moved it left or right. And so because we've gone left uh, in the negative direction, we're going to do, I like to think of it again as the opposite. So this time it'll be x plus 4. Okay, So that would be the function. Uh, let's go and deal with the domain and range again. So we have our original function, which was y is equal to j of x. We have our new function, which we just dealt with up top there. Okay, And then we'll deal with our domain and our range and see how those have changed, if at all. Uh, so let's talk about the domain first. Uh, this graph right here, even though it doesn't look like it, this graph is always going to the left in this direction and to the right and same down here and right here. So we would say that x is a member of the reals for both of these. It's always going in the positive and the negative direction. Okay, So x can be anything. How about the range? Well, the range is definitely different. The range for our original function looks like uh, y had to be greater than or equal to 0. And because we've moved down 5, I believe it was, we would say that y has to be, in this case now, greater than or equal to negative 5. Okay, It's fairly straightforward for example 2. Uh, let's try another one. Example 3 here says, the graph of y equals x cubed, so that's a cubic function, is translated two units to the right and one unit down. What uh, is the equation of the image graph? So fairly straightforward again. Uh, we are going two units to the right, one unit down. Let's start with the one unit down. One unit down, again, we'll do the opposite. So we have y plus 1. Okay? And then because we are going two units to the right, uh, that would be x minus 2, like so. And then, of course, because it's a cubic function, we'll have cubed like that. Okay? So I think you're finding this is hopefully a fairly easy lesson uh, right here. Last but not least, example four says, describe how the graph of y is equal to 1 over x squared could have been translated to create the graph on the right. What are the equations of the asymptotes of the image uh, graph right here? All right, so let's take a look. So notice how we have the equation y is equal to 1 over x squared right here. Uh, as we can see, we have a function that looks like so. We have a vertical asymptote right here at x equals 0. And it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay? So how has this equation changed to a? Well, it looks like we've moved it uh, 3 in some direction. We have y minus 3. Remember that that's going to move the graph up and down. And then I like to think of it as the opposite direction. So that's actually going to mean that the graph has moved 3 up. So we can say that this graph has been translated three units up. Okay, what else can we say? Uh, let's talk about those horizontal and the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so because this graph has been translated three units up, we can say that the horizontal asymptote is no longer going to be at y equals zero. So the horizontal asymptote moves three units up as well, and it's located now at y equals three. Okay, And if you think if this graph has just been moved three units up, does that vertical asymptote change? Nope. So we'd say the vertical asymptote is 
is unchanged. Hopefully you remember uh, how we deal with asymptotes. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at our final one right here, B. How has this graph changed? Well, we just dealt with the minus 3, so the plus 4, of course, is instead of translating it 3 units up, uh, that's going to translate. I'll just do this in a different color to differentiate. This one's going to translate. So translate it 4 units, in this case, down. Uh, and we are also going to be able to say this x plus 3 is going to translate uh, three units, remember in the opposite direction, so we'd say uh, left. Okay, And so that's going to have some bearing on our both our horizontal and our, our vertical asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote moves uh, four units down. And so the horizontal asymptote now would be at y is equal to negative 4. And then the vertical asymptote moves 3 units left. And so we would say the vertical asymptote is now located at x is equal to negative 3. Okay. So that's all that we're looking at. Uh, the big thing from this, uh, this unit is that I want to make sure that you can look at uh, an equation like so and be able to graph it, and, uh, and kind of vice versa. You can um, look at maybe a original graph and then maybe a translated graph and also be able to give us um, the equation like so. Okay, that concludes this lesson.